early problems of the Weimar Republic. You can argue that the Weimar Republic could have been doomed from the beginning due to the constitution it had set up. The Weimar Republic was set up after the Kaiser had abdicated after World War I. You can, everyone over the age of 20 had the right to vote. This made things democratic, but it also gave power to those people who actually opposed the Republic from the beginning. People voted for MPs to sit in the Reichstag. The Reichstag was the German Parliament, and they used a system of proportional representation to get MPs um, in the Reichstag. So the number of votes you received would equal to the number of seats a party would get in the Reichstag. This meant there were lots of different parties in the Reichstag, which made it very difficult to make decisions. That often meant that the president had to rely on using Article 48, which gave him the power to make laws in an emergency without the Reichstag. The Chancellor was responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the Reichstag, and he was appointed by the president. The Chancellor often found it very difficult to get the 50% of the Reichstag he needed to agree to pass laws because of the system of proportional representation, which meant lots of governments just relied on Article 48 in order to make decisions. These coalition governments, these governments set up of many different parties, were often short-lived, and there were a series of different chancellors in the early years of the Weimar Republic. The Weimar Republic was associated with the stab-in-the-back theory or the stab-in-the-back myth, which was the idea that the German army was about to win World War I before these Weimar politicians betrayed them and signed the armistice and agreed to the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. This was not true, but was uh, used to criticise the Weimar Republic and many people believed it. Unfortunately, the Weimar Republic was highly unpopular from the beginning as it had been so closely associated with the terms of the Treaty of Versailles. It was the Weimar Republic politicians who had agreed to sign the treaty. However, they really had no choice. If they didn't agree, Germany would have just been invaded again. They also had no say in the actual terms themselves. Therefore, Germans nicknamed the treaty Diktats, which means dictated peace. An easy way to remember the terms of the treaty is LAM. L stands for land. Germany lost 13% of her land and all of her overseas colonies. This was humiliating for a great powerful nation, and it also meant many German-speaking peoples were now technically in new countries. For example, part of Germany was given over to the Polish Corridor. A stands for army. The army was reduced to 100,000 men, six battleships, and no submarines. This was humiliating for such a powerful nation, and it also left Germany potentially defenceless, particularly as they were not allowed troops in the Rhineland, which is on the border of, with France. M stands for money, or reparations. Germany was forced to pay reparations, which are war damages, for World War I. This made things very difficult, as they'd lost many of their industrial areas um, under the um, territorial terms, the land terms, which meant it was difficult to pay these reparations, and they were also recovering after World War I. B stands for blame. Germany were forced to take sole responsibility for causing World War I, a term which was very much resented. The unpopularity of the Weimar Republic is demonstrated through two uprisings. The 1919 Spartacus Uprising was a communist group who attempted to overthrow the Weimar Republic. They tried to seize the um, government's newspaper and telegraph bureau and organise a general strike. However, it was badly organised and received very little support of the people of Germany. Therefore, the uprising didn't succeed and it was crushed by the Freikorps, who were the ex-soldiers who hated communism. The leaders were put on trial and executed. The leaders were... Um, Karl Lipschnitt and Rosa Luxemburg. The Cap Putsch followed in 1920, led by Dr. Cap, and this time the Fry Corps were involved in the actual uprising rather than stopping it. They attempted to seize power in Berlin, 
the Weimar Republic fled to Dresden, but before leading, called a general strike in order to paralyse the city. This succeeded as Cap could not manage the, to run the country and um, run the actual um, uprising without coal, electricity, supplies, etc. This actually demonstrates that the Weimar Republic did receive some support from the people of Germany. However, it also showed a lack of sympathy with the, uh, from the German army as they refused to crush the uprising. A final problem that the Weimar Republic faced was an economic one. In 1923, the country suffered dramatic hyperinflation. This was caused by uh, the attempts to pay reparations. The Germans couldn't pay the reparations, so the French invaded the Ruhr, the industrial area of Germany, in order to seize goods in kind, such as coal, iron and steel. In order to stop this from happening, the the workers in the Ruhr went on strike, refusing to mine these goods. However, they still wanted paying. The German government paid them, but didn't actually have the supplies to do so, so they printed more money. There was too much money in circulation which was not backed up by gold reserves, therefore money lost its value. Prices went up and the value of money went down. At one point, it cost 800,000 uh, marks in order to buy one egg. There were some winners from hyperinflation, for example, the farmers, the price of food went up so they made more money. Those people who owed money, because the money they now had to repay, now had to repay was worth less. And those who, well, those were the main um, winners. The losers were those on a fixed income, like pensioners and workers, also savers, um, lost out as the money they had saved now became worthless. All of these factors led to a highly unpopular Weimar Republic. People blamed the Republic for printing the money in the first place. Hyperinflation finally stopped in 1924, marked the beginning of, what, of Streisman's golden years era. <laughs>